Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Faith, thank you so much for being here. Today we are discussing parenting, all about like my parenting style and answering any questions you have. So I asked you guys on Instagram and also on a YouTube community post what questions or topics you'd like me to cover in a parenting type of video. So I'm going to be working off of my phone which has all of the questions on here so far. There might be some more that come in as I'm filming because I just asked a few hours ago. So I'm just going to be working off of this and then also filling in any other topics or things that I think might be helpful. This is going to be just kind of like a chit chat video like we're hanging out us moms grab a drink I just have my water here with some lemon vitality essential oils in here it tastes so fresh it tastes like I squeezed a fresh lemon into my water and I also have my diffuser back here with some yummy fall scents going so we're just gonna chat like friends and I'm just gonna share with you guys how I've navigated the first year or year and a half now of parenting and everything like that so let's get into the video okay I'm gonna pull up the questions here the first question that I know I can quickly answer is snacks and meals you feed her so I actually did just do a video with summer what she eats in a day it was like a what my one-year-old eats in a day video it's like maybe from three or four weeks ago I will leave a link for it up in the cards here if you want to check it out but it gives some really really good ideas for meals um, I don't I showed snacks too yeah I showed everything she ate that day so if you want some ideas for that I think that that video is really really good um, she eats a lot of fruit like right now her favorite food I have to say is clementines she eats like at least two clementines a day she also really loves olives still that was back in that video so um, I'm not gonna bore you guys though for those of you who already saw that video go check out that video if you need meal ideas or snacks other questions related to that I guess um, a lot of like feeding and stuff goes into routine and schedule so I'm gonna answer a couple questions I have about that so schedules at the different stages oh my gosh I don't know if I can really remember each stage like infant or newborn infant and then like I don't know six months like that crawling stage um, and now her stage now all I know is I've consistently done the same steps before each nap or things like that so right now she's on one nap in the middle of the day so basically our schedule is that she wakes up around 7 30 or 8 in the morning takes a nap from like noon to 2 2 30 and then goes to bed at 7 she always goes to bed at 7 like that is her bedtime we don't mess with it I am a schedule person. I love schedule. I love routine. And in order for me to be the best mom I can be, putting her on a schedule and on a routine was just the way to go. I know a lot of moms that just fly by the seat of their pants throughout the day, and that's great. Like, if you can do that, that's fine. And if your kids you know, are fine and aren't upset because they don't have a routine, then that's great. I personally believe that kids do better with routine, um, but that just could be because that's my personality. Like, I do so much better on a routine and a schedule, and I like to kind of know what's coming. I don't like a lot of change, so uh, that's what we've done throughout every stage, um, and that was really just dependent on how many naps she took. Sleep has a lot to do with that. So most of you know that we worked with Megan from BY Sleep Consulting on a sleep plan and schedule and that really solidified our routine. That is how we incorporate then meals and like back when she wasn't eating yet, um, breastfeeding and bottle feeding, we incorporated that into when her naps were. So I really think that getting sleep down and a good consistent routine there is the key to creating a routine for everything else. Next question, do you and your husband have the same approach to parenting? 
I would say in some ways yes and in some ways no. So um, big picture, definitely yes. We both have the same um, views on how we want Summer to be raised, how we want her to, I guess, um, come into the world, like what we want to protect her from that's in the world. We both are on the same page when it comes to raising her up um, in a godly way in the church. I made a whole video on her dedication at our church, um, so big picture wise, yes. I think with like smaller things in terms of uh, like discipline, I think we both we both realize that it's very important to um, properly discipline. I think we both just maybe go about it in different ways. I tend to be a little bit more soft um, and maybe let her get away with a little bit more. Nothing dangerous, of course, but um, he's definitely more like, no, that's a no and you don't do that, if you know what I mean, which I think is very typical of mom and dad. Uh, I don't know. But I think in general, yes, we have the same approach which is great like that gives me ease to know that our I guess big picture plan for how we want our kids to be raised is the same um, but we definitely still get in arguments from time to time about those little things like sometimes I think he's too tough on her and I'll be like she's just a baby and then he'll say she's really not a baby anymore which you know I'm sure everyone has those kind of conversations where one parent is maybe more strict than the other so that's something that we have to navigate um, and work through together but overall big picture we definitely have the same values which is great okay next question I'm gonna go into gentle parenting options um, that was another topic that someone requested so going off of what I just said about how I'm more soft I guess what I mean by that is I definitely am more gentle when it comes to discipline so and I actually I never thought I'd be that way I always would talk about how when I become a mom I'm gonna be super strict and lay down the law and all of that stuff and I just am NOT that way I think summer definitely knows what is okay to do and what's not because when she's about to do something that she knows is wrong she'll give me a look or go at it slowly so I do think that even though my parenting style is different than what I anticipated it would be I think it's still effective and it's definitely more of a gentle discipline approach so um, I came across a couple accounts on Instagram that I will put down below in the description bar in case you want to check them out um, but they're really about I think it's called big little feelings, little big feelings or something. Um, I'll put it down below, but it's basically gentle parenting. So um, instead of like spanking or yelling or not paying attention to their feelings when they're going through a tantrum or something like that, um, you're supposed to talk th them through the tantrum, maybe redirect, um, understand that they're having feelings and as I say this, I'm like cringing inside because I never thought I'd parent like this. Um, but I don't know, it's just different when you have your own child. You just love them so much that you want to understand what they're going through. So uh, basically, and I think I talked a little bit about this on my Instagram stories the other day. If Summer is doing something that she shouldn't be doing, I do tell her no. I know there's some people that don't even use the word no. I use the word no. She knows what no means. And I think that's important um, just because... If she's doing something dangerous she needs to know to stop immediately so I will say no but instead of just very abrupt abruptly removing her from the situation or being rough like pulling her away I will get down on her level like crouch down on her level look her in the eyes and explain to her why she cannot do what she's doing so if she is going into the kitchen and opening up the drawer with um, cleaning stuff I will say no and if she doesn't listen I will then gently pull her away shut the door I'll say please shut the door a lot of times she will shut the door on her own and I will get down and say you cannot go into this cabinet there are chemicals in there that can be dangerous and leave it at that and normally she just will go away if she continues to do it I will just repeat it I will just say no you need to shut the door please you cannot go in there because there's chemicals and it can be dangerous. 
and I will just continue to repeat that. If after two or three times she continues to do it, I will more firmly say no and I will say we're going to move on to another activity and I will try to redirect her into another activity so that it doesn't spiral out of control and become a tantrum. Um, I talked about on my Instagram stories how I deal with tantrums and thankfully I, I feel like she's now 16, 17 months old. She really doesn't throw tantrums anymore and I knock on wood because I know that they can kind of come and go. Uh, I think a lot of her tantrums did also have to do with the fact that she had a chronic ear infection that just was not going away and I didn't even realize it for a while so I think she was just mad in general but um, we did experience quite a few tantrums when she turned one and in those first couple months after she turned one and I would basically just ignore them unless they were spiraling out of control or or she was doing something that was going to physically hurt herself um, like throwing herself on the floor or throwing things or something like that as long as it wasn't gonna hurt anyone else around her or hurt her I would just ignore it and then if she seemed like she was gonna calm down I would then explain I, I see that you're frustrated but um, let's go do this other activity and kind of redirect her take her outside if it was nice out uh, something like that so I hope that that's helpful I didn't really write anything specifically down uh, to go off of because I wanted this to be more of a chat and kind of just off the cuff but if you want more information on tantrums or want um, I don't know me to go maybe further in detail on that I could maybe make a whole separate video on it okay I'm gonna do this question next any tips for keeping a toddler busy inside during the colder months so I live in New York State and Thankfully this week it's beautiful. We're going to go out to the playground later today, um, but uh, there's definitely going to be days where it's just nasty outside and we don't go outside. So as fall was coming into winter and a couple weeks ago it was just freezing rain out, I had to get really creative with some things to keep summer occupied because she loves going outside and I knew that this was going to be a little bit more of a struggle transitioning into the colder season. So what I do is I basically have a few different play zones in my house that if she's getting bored in one area I will take her to another area so we have our living room where she does have a lot of toys um, she also has another section of the living room behind our couch that's like her own little play place um, there's also a cabinet or two in the kitchen that she likes to play in that's safe to play in and then she also has her room which has a lot of books and toys so I have three or four different areas of the house that I can take her to also the basement too she does like to play in the basement we have a few old toys down there and things that she can play with down there if we're getting really desperate um, but basically I try to extend the length of playtime in each space as long as possible um, and then move her into a different place space if she's starting to get irritated not be happy things like that also what I will do is um, if it's not nice enough outside um, to play outside uh, but we just need to get out of the house what I will do is get her in the car and drive to we have like a shopping mall near us that is dead there's almost nobody ever in it and I'll just take her there and give her a stroller ride in there or even let her walk around because it's just empty so like especially now with COVID I I don't take her out too much but when I do I make sure that she's either in the stroller so that she's not touching everything or if I do take her somewhere it's somewhere that's really not a crowded busy place so that's another thing we do um, I also come up with activities that I maybe see on Pinterest or other youtubers do so recently I showed on Instagram stories an activity I came up with where I put a bunch of like filler rocks and stones for succulents I have a whole jar of just these white little rocks and this is something that you obviously have to supervise because you don't want them to swallow the rocks but I put them into a glass container and then also brought out like a cupcake um, tray and other containers that she could put the rocks in and they'd all make different noises that really interested her sometimes I'll also put the shower on in the bathtub and let her kind of 
um, hang outside the bathtub and like throw her toys in her bath toys that are obviously water resistant um, and let them go in the rain we call it the rain um, the shower head so I just try and get creative and come up with different ideas it's it's exhausting like trust me I'm rolling through all these ideas as if it's easy but it's not it's exhausting especially when they go down to just one nap because you have like a full five to six hour window that you have to occupy them um, and there are plenty of days where I throw on Blue's Clues on the TV that's her show that she loves to watch um, and I'll just throw in a couple episodes of that and let her watch the TV I don't shy away from um, admitting that I do that because it, it's hard to keep a toddler occupied so I try to not do that all the time but if we're both just like it's not working I throw an episode of Blue's Clues on and it's fine. Next question were you ever scared or second-guessing becoming a mama before you had summer? It feels like so long ago it's like over two years ago that I was pregnant like the beginning stages of being pregnant um I do remember in the first trimester when I was so, so nauseous constantly, I remember just being very like, ugh, why did I do this? Like, why did we get pregnant? Um, but that quickly faded after um, the nausea went away, and I, I don't remember in the second trimester at all, like, second-guessing it. Uh, in the third trimester, I definitely had more nerves about labor and delivery, and I also was very cognizant of my freedom was going to be kind of like taken away. I, that's not a correct sentence, but I was aware of the fact that my freedom was going to be a lot more limited or basically non-existent once I had a newborn, but you really, you can't even prepare yourself for the change. Um, so actually I would say I had more of those thoughts of like second guessing or just feeling like what on earth did we do after Summer was born. So the first two months, even into like four or five months, but especially those first two months, I absolutely remember thinking in my head, what did we do? Why did we do this? why did we decide to have a baby like this is crazy um summer had a lot of issues with reflux with a milk and soy protein intolerance she was by no means an easy baby she was a difficult baby so i am eager to maybe the second time around if and when that happens um hopefully have a, a better experience but i feel like regardless that newborn stage is so difficult you don't realize how much you give up and what a sacrifice it is and it is completely normal to feel like what did i just do am i really sure that i even want to do this at that point it's like <laughs> too late of course um but yeah, that, that is totally normal if you're pregnant feeling that way. Um, it's normal and everyone will tell you in that first month or two, it'll get better. It's going to get better. Um, and I remember people telling me that and just being like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But I promise it does. It does get better. It just takes time. It takes time. I didn't feel anything like myself until a minimum of six months after giving birth and I would say I really didn't come into my own as a mom until she was 10 11 months old so just give yourself time you it might feel hopeless it might feel like you're never gonna get back to yourself you're never gonna be the same again and truthfully you're not gonna be the same again because you now have a child who you are responsible for who relies on you to do everything for them so you're not gonna be the same again but I promise you it's gonna be so much more rewarding once you see that baby look at you and smile once they say mama once all these things start to happen once you can teach them things and it just I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it I really am because it becomes so rewarding but that first 
few months is so hard. I am just so happy that someone asked that because I feel like that is so important to share with um, new moms or moms-to-be that um, the honest side of it that you it, you are going to lose yourself a little bit and you are going to be different but that you will you will overcome it. So I'm super happy that someone asked that. Okay, on to more questions. Answer that, answer that. Okay, activities that Summer enjoys. Um, this isn't really a parenting question, but I'll quickly just answer. Um, she loves to be outside. She loves going to the playground. She loves playing in the yard. Um, that's probably her number one thing. She loves um, blocks right now. She loves stacking of blocks. She loves books. Um, that should have been the first thing I said. She loves books. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you see that every morning now when I get her up um, or she wakes up, I go in her room, turn her lights on, and she does not want to get out of her crib to get her bottle. She wants me to put a stack of books in her crib so that she can flip through them. And also when we're playing like in the living room or in her room, half the time she's not playing with toys, she's playing with books. She's looking through books, looking at the pictures. That is her number one activity, um, and I love that. I love that um, she likes books. I think I did definitely encourage it, and especially my mom, who has bought her so many books. Um, I really appreciate that she has so many books to look through and that that's something she loves to do because I think that that's great for her development, and uh, I think hopefully that will continue to uh, go with her as she grows up. Let's see if there's more parenting related questions. Um, okay, any good parenting books to recommend? Uh, yes, I actually saw that question and made sure to bring in the books I wanted to reference. So this is a book I actually got from my gynecologist um, at my first visit. It's Your Pregnancy and Childbirth Month to Month. I read this more so when I was pregnant just to read about the different stages of pregnancy. It talks a lot about what you should do to stay healthy, like what to stay away from, what foods to stay away from. So I read that portion of this book and it was very informative. I didn't read much about the childbirth, or maybe I did. So this is really more, I mean it talks about lactose intolerance, it talks about formula feeding. It talks a little bit about stuff after the fact, but I guess this is more for when you're pregnant. The book I really, really want to recommend is The Wonder Weeks. So I have the book and I also have the app, which I think is like $2.99, but I highly recommend getting it. Uh, if you haven't heard about The Wonder Weeks, this is um, two researchers who, or maybe one, I think there's two or three researchers, who actually studied monkeys um, and they studied them this it had nothing to do with research that they were going to do for children they were just monkey researchers but they um noticed different stages of development in the baby monkeys with their mothers and they just thought hmm that this is very interesting it seems like all these monkeys are making these developmental leaps at the same exact time um in their development i wonder if it's the same with babies and they found that it did. It's more so um, explaining why your baby is fussy at certain times um, during their development, what they're learning, what they're going through, uh, and it really just helped me have more patience towards Summer whenever she was going through a leap. They call them developmental leaps. I was just able to have more patience for her because I knew that she was going through a developmental milestone. Because when they're really little, it's hard to pick up on developmental things that they're going through because they kind of are just like blobs. <laughs> um, so this was really helpful and it was very accurate for us. If anything, I feel like Summer hit the leaps maybe a little bit earlier than when they predicted for her based on her birth date. Um, your due date. You're supposed to base it off of their due date. So Summer was born a week early. I actually think it lines up more with when she was actually born, but you can kind of try to figure that out based on the app calendar. So uh, in the app you can put in your child's birth date or due date and it will give you notifications of when they're going to be entering another leap and it will give you a little bit of information about the leap and uh, what to expect but the book goes into a lot more detail of what actually they're learning it'll go into the leap signs just the signs of the leap coming were spot on um 
so I really liked this. It made me feel like I wasn't doing something wrong because a lot of times when she'd be so fussy, I'd be like, am I doing something wrong? She's fed, she's changed, like what's happening and then I'd look on the book or in the app and sure enough she was like right at the start of a developmental leap so I highly recommend getting this book I think it'll just give you peace of mind and make you feel better about your crabby baby and another person just asked me about tantrums so I've already touched on that but if you do want another video all about tantrums let me know I mean I think I sort of talked about how I deal with them um, enough in this video on Instagram, but I can go into more detail if you want. Let me know in the comments if there's any other parenting questions you have, anything at all. I will definitely make it a point to answer those or feel free to DM me on Instagram. I'm on there way more than I'm on YouTube. I'm doing just one video a week right now. It's all that I can really fit into my schedule, but I am daily on Instagram and Instagram stories. So feel free to reach out to me there if you have more questions. I hope this video was helpful if it was make sure you give it a thumbs up make sure you're subscribed and turn on the notification bell but that is it I love you all so so much and I hope to see you in my next video bye